Hello. I'm back again. Counter arguing John's um, video. So I'll start with a thing that caught my attention. Um, John saying, if implementation makes a difference, da da da, um, that will ana be analyzed later. Well, I think that's my first um, point of disagreement because it is exactly that what needs to be thought at the very beginning. Um, you can do a lot, you can produce great MOOCs, you can um, do a lot of uh, post-production work, you can do a lot of curriculum development, but how do you implement it? And we know that makes a difference. Um, he then goes on arguing that OER are freely ab available, and then he argues again with OEP, that, that that's a thing that is there kind of for, it's open and it's free, And but what does that um, mean? We know also from research. Um, that freely available doesn't mean anything. It doesn't imply anything more than they are there, that you can access them, but it doesn't, it doesn't have um, any other consequence more than that. Um, also, Catherine Cronin's in her own research, um, she suggested how many barriers uh, people, particularly lecturers, uh, members of staff, where he did, she, sorry, she did her research, how many barriers do they have to face when trying to adopt um, open educational practices? So again, I think this is, we're in, I mean, John is incurring here in what Sarah Lambert calls openness determinism. I don't think that these things are just implying that that would be um, a success. Then again, he says, well, um, they are unrestricted. Uh, but what does unrestricted mean? We know again from research that um, people, so refugees, have problems with isolation, have problems with um, paying the costs to go online, and they have problems in lack of experience in online learning. So if we think only about these three things, I can't imagine how... Um, How, how will it work? So is it unrestricted? But unrestricted for whom? Um, so I think we need to think about these things a bit more deeply. And maybe I think also, I think that maybe John is just thinking about the whole potential of it. But maybe yes, that it has potential. But I am not sure if that is enough. I think we need to go a bit deeper. Um, again, then John says that MOOCs help uh, refugees gain skills but how is that done and I think that's part of the implementation isn't it so how do they learn these skills do we will they learn these skills just sitting there and looking at the MOOCs so where is the process of scaffolding this project where is the process of scaffolding the learning where is the process to um, support them in the difficulties they have um, and then another thing I just kind of I'm a bit skeptic about is that John says that those MOOCs um, are serving as open certificates uh, for uh, higher education, right? So I'm a bit suspicious about that because I think that it can be also here um, an interest, underlying interest um, for higher education as we know their agenda and as we know that for them um, this has been, a, um, so higher education has transformed into a huge business. So again, do they want their students? Do they want what they want? Are they really after um, a support program for refugees or are they after their fees? So I think we need to think about this a bit more in, in, in relation again, which is my main argument, structural barriers. And I think we need to think about those in, I mean, deep and thoroughly and how can we address them.